The Detroit Pistons season hasn't even started yet, and we've already gotten some bad news when it comes to at least one probable starter and another rotation player. We'll talk about that in today's episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. You are Locked On Pistons, your daily Detroit Pistons podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's the deal? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On Pistons podcast. Per usual, I am your host, Kuka Hill. You can find me over on Twitter, at Kuka Hill. I want to thank you guys for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel, at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. There's another great way to support the podcast. To start the, the podcast off, man, don't waste any time. Pistons got some bad news. Before their season opener this Thursday, already got some bad news, man. Already got some tough news. They're going to be without Boyan Bogdanovich and Monte Morris for the first three to four weeks of the season due to injury. Now, for those of you guys who are subscribed to the YouTube channel, you guys got an instant reaction, 60 seconds short, that got uploaded. I was at work. I went outside, recorded a quick reaction. As soon as I got the the notification from the PR team, as soon as I was told, instantly went and recorded a short for you guys. So that's the kind of perks you get for being subscribed to the YouTube channel. So again, if you aren't already and you want some of those perks, please hit that subscribe button at Lockdown Pistons. Um, but yeah, Boyan Bogdanovich is still dealing with that calf strain. He's going to be out for at least another four weeks, and then he'll be reevaluated. Monte Morris... He's going to be reevaluated in three weeks after aggravating or not aggravating, suffering a right quad injury while rehabbing his lower back. Um, we did get some kind of positive news when it came to Isaiah Livers, even though I don't know if I'd paint it as positive, more so as things are going as expected. Um, they said that he is progressing nicely in his recovery and he is going to be reevaluated in just about four weeks. So, He's basically on timeline basis. I wouldn't call that great news or anything. Great news would have been, oh, he's actually coming back in two weeks or whatever. But I guess it's okay news that he's on point to returning. Um, but the, the injuries to Boyan and Monte Morris suck. Like, there's no other way around it. It just flat out suck. The Pistons, as we talked about on, I think, last podcast or the podcast before, they've been bitten by the injury bug. A, like a ton the last few years. Going all the way back to Killian Hayes' rookie season. Killian Hayes gets hurt, misses the majority of his rookie season with that hip injury. Then you go into Cade's season. Cade starts the year off with an injury, heads in the training camp with an injury, preseason, sprained ankle, deals with that injury throughout the year. They had multiple injuries happen throughout that season. Then you go into last season, you get, and then the second season, we don't even got to talk about the the Cage rookie season. We don't even got to talk about the whole COVID stuff. That was crazy as well. Then you got to go with the third season of this rebuild, this restore, and you get injuries to Isaiah Stewart. You get injuries to Boyan Bogdanovich. You obviously have Cade missing the entire year. You get injuries to several players on that. Jalen Duran suffers an injury. You know, you get injuries to multiple players throughout the season. So now we are on season number four of this quote-unquote restore, and injuries are already biting the Pistons before the season even actually starts. The season hasn't, the season hasn't even actually started yet. And a projected starter in Boyan Bogdanovich is going to be out at least a month, at least. That's when he gets eva- reevaluated. That's not when he immediately comes back. That's when they're getting reevaluated. Boyan in four weeks, so a minimum of that, and Monte in the middle of three weeks. Now, Later on, we'll talk about what the rotations will look like um, because of this and who eventually or who has an opportunity to really take advantage of these minutes that are going to be available for them. We'll talk about that in the second segment. But right off the bat, I just want to hit on the starting lineup. I think this all all but assures to me that you're going to get the Cade, Killian, Asar, Stu, Durant starting lineup. If Boyan was healthy, I thought there was a chance you might see – Cade, Killian, Asar, Boyan, Stu, or not. Let me try that. Let me start that over again. Cade, Killian, Boyan, Stu, Duran. Or you could get Cade, Asar, Boyan, Stu, Duran. Or you could get Cade, Ivy, Boyan, Asar, Duran. Some, some kind of combo with Boyan. I just could not see him coming off the bench. But with him now being out, 
I think it makes more sense for the Pistons to just go completely all in on that defensive lamp they started because they don't have their who was their best offensive player this past season. So even if you go full on offense, I don't feel like your offense is going to be as good in that starting lineup if you don't have the best shooter on the team, one of, if not the best scorer right now on the team in Boyan Bogdanovich. It kind of goes out the window with that. So if you don't got that, um, I would just go all in on the defense, see how that goes for the first few weeks of the season. And if it doesn't look good when Boyan comes back, you insert him into the starting lineup. You try to shake some things out and try to add some more spacing offense into the lineup. Um, I think that's how it impacts the starting lineup. I don't think Monte had anything to do with the starting lineup, so I don't think he impacts the starting lineup so much. Um, But definitely Boyan, they're going to miss Boyan a lot. Now, I have been on the podcast for over the, uh, the, uh, the past year talking about how the Pistons need to trade Boyan Bogdanovich. I still feel that way. However, if he is going to be on the team... Like he was heading into the season, obviously. They are they were going to massively need him. And now the fact that he's just gone, not with a trade or anything, just gone, not being able to be used, not being able to, you know, get something in return for him to play for him, just completely gone for four weeks, is gonna hurt the team. They're gonna need his spacing, they needed his scoring off the bench or in the starting lap, whichever one it was going to be, his vet presence on the floor and his gravity as a shooter was probably the biggest thing they needed out there on the floor. And without him, it's going to be really tough, I think, for the Pistons offensively in the half court, at at the very least. I think they'll still be good in transition. I think they'll still be good in fast breaks. I think they'll be good getting stops, depending on what lineup they try out there. Um, If they go with that all-defensive lineup, I think they can run in transition, get stops and stuff. But in the half court, I thought Boyan was really going to make Cade's life easier. And without him, I really do think they're probably going to struggle Um, in the half court. um, The last thing I want to talk about with this is the fact about or the point about me wanting to trade Boyan Bogdanovich. This is why I believed and spoke on the podcast many times last season, you should have gotten rid of Boyan at last year's trade deadline. A player who is 33 years old, who has dealt with reoccurring calf issues, who got hurt at the end of last season with more calf issues, and is now hurt again at the beginning of this season with more calf issues. At 33 years old, in the midst of a career season on a bad team, on a good contract that contenders wanted, you pounce on that value while you have it. Especially with him playing at peak vo- at peak performance combined with peak value contract-wise, it was a match made in heaven to get a really good deal for him. Especially because, again, the Pistons weren't good and his talents were basically being wasted on a team. And after the trade deadline, they basically shut him down anyways. Like, so, there was no point. Get some assets for your future. Get some assets for him. He's not going to be here in two years. And he's old. He's an older player. And the risk with older players is that they're going to be injury prone. And the risk with older players like Boyan Bogdanovich, who was in a career season, it's unlikely they can repeat that career year that they had, along with the injury risk. So that's why you pounce on that trade value and you get rid of him before... Not Let me not say get rid of him because it sounds like he's a bad player and you don't want him. You simply move off of him and do handle your asset management in the best way possible, which has been one of my only one of my main criticisms of Troy Weaver and this front office is their asset management. I, I don't think they do a great job at all with their asset management. I think this might have been another one of those blunders when it comes to asset management with them. You should have I feel like you definitely should have moved on from Boyan this past offseason at the very least. I would have done it this past trade deadline when his value was highest. Because coming into this season, into his age 34 season, Knowing he just dealt with calf issues this past year, it's a reoccurring thing with his calves. Um, with his calf, now he has another calf injury to start this year. Now he's 34 years old. He's missing the beginning of this, this season. He's probably not going to play as well as he did last season. So now, if you do decide to trade him, it's going to be for less than what you could have traded him at the last deadline. And what was it for? What was the time held on to him for? For him to provide extra two months of vet leadership? Was that worth the value potentially falling? Was that worth the risk? I don't think so. I don't think so. So that was just a quick rant I wanted to go on. I, I, this team should have moved off of Boyan last year. And again, it's not because he's a bad player. It's because he was a good player on a good contract playing at the peak of his performances, not making a difference for a losing team, but would have for a winning team, had many contenders interested in him, and he would have been able to pounce on his value and actually add to this team's future. And he would have done great with asset management. And I think that's something they missed with that one. So that's a quick rant I wanted to go on. But Monty and, or Monte and Boyan both out three to four weeks. 
How do you guys feel? How is this going to impact the team? Do you guys think that there's players that are going to take advantage of this? What do you guys think the starting lineup's going to look like now? Do you guys agree with me about Boyan, the decision not to trade him this past season or at the off or in the off season? Let me know all that in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kuka Hill. Coming up, how are the rotations going to be impacted by these two missing the first month or so of the season? We'll talk about that soon. But first, let me tell you guys about one of my favorite sponsors, Price Picks. So the NBA season is getting back started. And first place I went to was Price Picks. You're probably asking, what is Price Picks? Price Picks is the largest independently own daily fantasy sports platform in North America. We are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you get the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And trust me, you guys think I'm jo- joking about this? No. I already have started with prize picks. I'm recording this right before the Warriors and Phoenix Suns game. I already got two entries. Slotted in here. I got Kevin Durant over two, 22 points. They got a deal for the first night of the NBA. I got the over on, on Devin Booker and Chris Paul assist at 14. You got the over on Andrew Wiggins points. They also have another promo going on with Steph Curry just to score one point. Obviously, I'm taking the over on that one. And then one of my favorite promos that they do very often at Prize Picks is the Taco Tuesday. And what's today when I'm recording this? Taco Tuesday. Don't get LeBron in here. But... Taco Tuesday, they got Chris Paul with a Taco Tuesday deal to be over six assists. I'm definitely taking advantage of that one. Price Picks is amazing, man. I have a lot of fun with Price Picks, man. You head over there again. You pick two to six players. You pick the over or under on their Price Picks projection. And you can do multiple players across sports. You can do, look, I'm looking at the app right now. You can do NBA, NFL, college football, college basketball, NHL, soccer, MLB. You can do gaming. You can do all this stuff. And put it all into one projection. That's why Price Picks is my favorite daily fantasy sports option out there, period. Especially with the NBA coming back around. So go to pricepicks.com slash LockdownNBA and use code LockdownNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, go to pricepicks.com slash LockdownNBA and use code LockdownNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price Picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons, hit that subscribe button, or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Before we get back into the Pistons, I got a fun question to ask you guys. So me and my wife just got back from White Castle, and I got this strawberry banana smoothie. And I absolutely love strawberry banana smoothies. I absolutely love them. I want to know... Do any of you guys also like strawberry smoothies? And where is your favorite one? Because I feel like every place has one. My favorite one by far is McDonald's. I feel like McDonald's strawberry banana smoothies are just just chef's kiss. But White Castles, it, it wasn't too bad. Not too bad of a drink, but I just want to hear from you guys. What's your guys' favorite cold drink? Um, do you guys like strawberry banana smoothies? Let me know. Anyways, back to the Pistons. Enough about my, my favorite drinks out here. Um... How are the rotations going to be impacted by Monte Morris and Boyan Bogdanovich being out? Um, Well, I think this 100% guarantees that Killian Hayes is going to be in the rotation. Now, I thought, I think a lot of people, based off what Monte Williams had been talking about and what we saw throughout preseason, a lot of people thought that Killian Hayes was going to be in the rotation nonetheless. Um, I thought so from the things that Monte has said and how Killian Hayes had played. James Edwards wrote an article about the rotation he thought after preseason, and he had Killian Hayes in it. Quite a few people around the team are saying that Killian Hayes has really impressed them. He was going to be in the rotation. Now, does that mean he guaranteed was going to be in there? No, you got to wait and see, obviously. But I thought there was a pretty good chance he was going to be in it nonetheless. But with Monte Morris out, he's 100% going to be in the rotation. I actually think there is a possibility that Monte going out opens up the door a little bit for Marcus Sasser. Um, now, it depends how Monty wants to go with this rotation. Again, it's really going to be interesting. We talked about this last week, even without the injuries, without knowing how long these guys were going to be out. The rotation is going to be very, very interesting of how they're going to handle this, um, especially with both these guys out. Um, so let me just go ahead and paint this. Let's do this hypothetical. Let's say the starting lineup is that defensive lineup we saw in preseason. Let's say it is Cade, Killian, Asar, Stu, and Durant. If that's the Pistons starting lineup, what does the backup unit look like? I'm going to go ahead and say, here are the players that 
are battling for minutes with that backup spot. So at the guard rotation, you got Alec Burks, Jane Ivey, and Marcus Sasser. At the forward positions, you got Joe Harris and and, and Joe Harris. <laughs> like, so you, that's what you got there. Um, you then got Marvin Bagley and James Wiseman battling for the backup five spot. Did I forget somebody? Why do I feel like I, I forgot? I, I skipped over somebody. Did I skip over somebody? Let me let me go check the roster real quick. What just happened? I feel I low key feel like as I was talking just now, I skipped over someone. Did I? I don't think I did. Yeah, no, I didn't. I, I don't know why I felt like I skipped over somebody. So I think this guarantees that Joe Harris is going to be in the rotation. So you can slot him at the three. Um, I think what they might do here, and it would be a terrible defensive lineup. It's going to be terrible defensively, but I don't think they really have a choice. I think the start, the backup lineup probably would be, or the backup five. I could see Sasser, Ivy, Burks, Harris, and Bagley. Now, that lineup right there that I just mentioned is not going to be good defensively at all. It's it's not going to be good. It, it will not be a good defensive lineup, which is why if they do go 10-man deep, Without even without Boyan Monte. Now I know that Monte mentioned that he doesn't want to go anywhere deeper than ten, you know, ten players with the rotation. But that was assuming full health. Does he cut the rotation down to nine? Um, so he doesn't have to play five v five lineup, like five and five out type of lineups, whatever. Now he doesn't have to go five and five out even with the ten man rotation. He can stagger guys, which is why I hope he does. If he does go ten man rotation. With these guys out, because if you do just end up with a lineup where we're watching a uh, we're basically we're watching a lineup of Sasser, Ivy, um, Burks, Harris, and Bagley, yeah, that defensive rating is probably going to be like one hundred and twenty thousand um, per hundred possessions. Like that, that's going to be like it's going to be really bad. So if you do, if you can stagger like Asar and Killian and Stu with those lineups to try to keep some defense on the floor, I think that probably would be best. Um, but that's the, the backup rotation I'm looking at right now. The only other player that I could see maybe squeaking into the lineup is Stanley Yamude, who just got that two-way contract. I don't think so, though. I, I don't think he's going to be in the rotation. I'm I, I, happy for him to get the two-way, but I don't think he's going to be in the rotation, even with the injuries. Um, the other situation they could do, I don't see them doing. I would not want them to do this, but I guess it is definitely on the table at least now because... Um, of the injuries, but if they could go with a double big lineup and they could go, you know, Ivy, Burks, Harris, Wiseman, Bagley, I think that would be really terrible. I think that would be worse than having no defense on the floor. Then you just basically would have nothing on the floor, I feel like. It would be really bad. I, I'm, I wouldn't be a fan of that. But it's definitely on the table that that's something they decide to do. Um, but my guess, my, my if I had to put my money on it, if this was a projection on price picks, well, I would go out there and put, I would say the back of the line probably is going to be Marcus Sasser, Ivy, Burks, Harris, and Bagley. And they're going to try to stagger those guys throughout so they don't have to have all five of them on the floor at once. And they can have some semblance on defense on the floor at, at some point, at, at all times. Um, now, that also could be a reason why they don't go with the all-defensive lineup because they don't have any defense off the bench now. Now, so maybe they do bring Killian Hayes off the bench still. still and... Because the last game we did watch when they were all healthy, Killian Hayes started and they went into all defense. Final game, he didn't play because of knee soreness. Um, he did. He was a full participant the day after, so I don't think that was, I think it was just precaution to keep him ready for the season. So I don't know if they would have actually benched him in that final preseason game or if they would have started him. We don't know yet. Um, but if they feel like, hey, we don't got enough defense coming off the bench, they could bring Killian Hayes off the bench. Um, it really does seem like they want Ivy as the sixth man. Now, he could start to start the season up and everything we've heard and seen is just a lie. Maybe all that was just, a, you know, just whatever, but it really does seem like he was even, Ivy was even asked again today when I'm recording this on the 24th about being a six man and he was talking about owning it and whatever. So it just really feels like that he's going to be the six man. So if Killian doesn't start the two for the defensive lineup, I could see him starting Burks and then going with um, Sasser, Killian, Ivy, Harris, and Bagley off the bench. So now you have a little bit of defense with Killian Hayes off ball. Um, so I could see that as well, but I don't know, man. It's going to be really interesting. This is the stuff I was telling you guys about that I'm so excited for this season. It's not about the wins or losses that I'm really excited for. I'm really interested to see how Monty handles this kind of stuff right here. 
How does he handle the rotations? What kind of lineups are we seeing on the floor? We could see some really crazy lineups on the floor at once. Um, so I'm interested to see it. The Pistons' first game of the season is in just a few short days. Can't wait to see it happen. Can't wait to see what the starting lab is going to be. Can't wait to see the rotations, who plays what minutes. Um, but I think that this these injuries really do. I think they opened up minutes for Marcus Sasser. And I think if Marcus Sasser plays really well, and I think if Killian Hayes plays really well, and I think if the starting lineup plays well without Boyan, I do think that if those, if those guys do play well and they play above expectations and the team is not – I'm not saying the team has to be at 600 ball uh, – playing ball at 600 – win uh, pace, not even 500 win pace. But, like, they're being competitive in most games. They're winning some games, and they look, you know, fine, and they look good, whatever, for where they're at. I could see the Pistons trading Boyan and Monty when they come back if they are if they feel good about um, – if they feel good about where those players are at. So that's something to watch for, too, during these four weeks. Where are these players at? Are they taking advantage of this opportunity? And should the Pistons feel comfortable moving on from these guys again, assets for them, or should they bring them back into the fray? Let me know how you guys feel about all that, your rotations, possible trades down the line. Let me know all that. Comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kook Hill. When we come back, there was no contract extensions for Killing Hayes or James Wiseman. Was that the right move by the Detroit Pistons? We'll talk about that soon. But first, you guys got to hear from some of our lovely sponsors. So I want to thank you guys again for making Locked On Pistons your first listen of every single day. We are free and available on all your podcast platforms. If you haven't already, head to the YouTube channel at Locked On Pistons. Hit that subscribe button or leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. That's another great way to support the podcast. Um, so the extension deadline for the 2020 draft class has passed by, um, I believe it was Monday or I'm recording this on Tuesday. So I, yeah, I think it was yesterday. Uh, on Monday, the 23rd, or Sunday. But I'm pretty sure it was Monday. I can't remember the exact day. Um, and there are a bunch of signings going on. They, a lot of people got paid. A lot of people took short or, or maybe not expensive deals just to get that financial um, security, like a Cole Anthony and a Denny Avizia. So that's the kind of stuff we saw. Um, Pistons had two guys eligible. Now, Sadiq Bay, by the way, for those of you guys who care, Sadiq Bay, a Piston draft pick. Did not sign an extension with the Hawks. Where he's also going to be a restricted free agent. I think that's pretty interesting. Um, but anyways, the Pistons did not sign Killian Hayes or James Wiseman to a contract extension. Um, was that the right move? With James Wiseman, 100% the right move. Don't think they were even remotely interested in talking an extension with him. Uh, he, I don't even know if he, he's probably not even going to be in the rotation to start the year. I, I'm really struggling to see James Wiseman's future with the Detroit Pistons. Um, I wouldn't be shocked if he's traded at some point this season. Uh, yeah, I just don't think an extension number makes sense for the Pistons. I don't think it makes sense for James Wiseman to do it with the Pistons either. So, James Wiseman, I, I don't think that was even in, in consideration. So, um, yeah, I think that was the right move there. For Killian Hayes, I, 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 had the underst- I have the understanding that there were talks with Killian Hayes about having an extension. This season. Um, Now, I ended up falling through, but there was interest on both sides for some kind of extension. Um, Again, eventually it did not go through, so obviously not enough interest, but it was something that was talked talked about. Um, So, for me, what that means to me is that Monty must be, Monty Williams, that is, must be really impressed with Killian Hayes through training camp and preseason. Troy Weaver in the front office must be really impressed with Killian Hayes' offseason training camp, and preseason. Um, and Killian Hayes is open to, obviously, getting that conflict or security financially. Um, but at the end of the day, no extension was made for him. I think that was probably the right move. I'm not going to be uh, hypocritical here. When the Pistons um, when the Pistons signed Isaiah Stewart to that contract extension, I came on here and I said, no, you shouldn't have done that contract extension. He hadn't proven that he was a legit NBA player yet, a legit positive NBA player yet. Now, there may have been signs. You want to believe in him. That's all fine. That's why you're, he's a restricted free agent. Let him play the year out, and if he proves that during this season, then sign him to whatever you want in the offseason. You have his rights. It's not like he can just leave. That's the whole point of restricted free agency is to wait. If you don't feel confident in guys that you drafted, let them play it out, and when a restricted free agency hits, you pay him whatever you want, or you let them just walk and sign with someone else. That's how I was with Isaiah Stewart. That's exactly how I am with Killian Hayes. I'm a fan of Killian Hayes. I believe in Killian Hayes. I think he can be a really good player in the NBA. I think we might see that this season. I'm really high on Killian Hayes still. 
But he hasn't done anything so far into his NBA career to warrant a contract extension. And if he does play well this year, he's a restricted free agent. Sign him back. Just sign him back. Like that's the, Again, that is the whole point of being a restricted free agent and drafting good players or drafting players maybe you're not sure about, but retaining their rights. So you don't have to be pressed into making a decision too early. You literally get right up until the clock hits zero to make a decision on these guys. So I, I still really have a problem with Stu's extension. I, I, I think you rushed that decision way too early for no reason at all when you could have signed him to the exact same deal in the offseason. I know the counter to that would be, well, you might pay him a little bit more in the offseason if he plays well. Good. I'll pay him a little extra if I know for sure he's actually good. If he has a good season, I know he's actually a good player. I'll pay a good player, good players worth of money. Same thing with Killian Hayes. I don't want to give him an extension. He hasn't been an NBA player legit as of all of these last three years. Now, if he goes out this season and he plays really well, yeah, okay, then I'll pay a little extra for him in restricted free agency. If he's actually showing me that he's good now, like that's the whole point of it. So I, I have an issue with Stu's contract extension still. And if Killian would have signed an extension, yes, the fan, uh, the person who roots for Killian Hayes and is high on Killian Hayes, yeah, I'd be really happy for him. But as someone who covers the team objectively, I think that would that wouldn't have made sense either. It doesn't make sense to do it either, and you'd be rushing a decision that you don't have to do. So I think the Pistons made the right decisions here. I think they messed up on one. Um, hopefully it pays off for them. There are some other guys that are better than Stu that signed for equal or less money than him this past week on these extensions and it makes it even worse for me that the Pistons rushed into that decision when they didn't have to rush into it they didn't have to rush into it so I I think they made the right decision with Killian and Wiseman I think they could have waited with Stu um and I think they overpaid for him when they didn't need to at that point um but that's my thoughts on the Pistons 2020 class extensions do you guys think they should have extended Stu do you guys think they should have extended Killian Hayes do you think they should have extended James Wiseman let me know in the comment section down below or over on Twitter at Kook Hill. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you guys for making Lockdown Pistons your first listen of every single day. We're free and available on all your podcast platforms. Hit that subscribe button to the YouTube channel. Leave us a five-star review on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. Till next time, I'll see you guys later. Stay safe. Go Pistons. Till next time, peace out.